Welcome to Mikon's Hardware. In this video I'm going to provide you a detailed review of Huanaju X99 F8 motherboard, which you can see right over here. This motherboard is almost identical copy of Huanaju X99 TF, which is available over here. Let's start with taking a look at both of the motherboards and figuring out if there are any significant differences. Of course, the biggest difference is that X99 F8 only supports DDR4. So over here we have 8 memory slots for DDR4 RAM. On Huanangi X99 TF we have 4 slots for DDR3 and 4 slots for DDR4. The black ones are for DDR4, the gray ones are for DDR3. Other than that, the motherboards are identical. But I was able to spot one more difference. On Huanangju X99TF, we have two 4 pin fan headers. One is located over here, another one is located over here. With Huanangju X99F8, unfortunately, Chinese decided to cut cost, and this 4 pin fan header is missing. So there is just one 4 pin fan header, which is over here. It's not that big of a deal, but still not a very pleasant surprise. Before I go to the test results, let's take a look at the detailed specification of the motherboard. Huanangju X99 F8 is supporting CPUs for Intel LGA 2011 version 3 socket. This includes Intel Core i7 and Xeon E5 CPUs. Xeon E5s are supported version 3 and version 4. Core i7s are 6000 and 5000 series. On the motherboard we have 8 slots for DDR4 RAM, which is working in quad-channel configuration means it's two DIMMs per one channel. Currently I have installed here a Xeon E5 2650 V3. On the rear panel of the motherboard we have four USB 3 ports, four USB 2 ports, two PS2 ports, 7.1 audio. For the front panel we have here front audio, COM port, RGB connector, front USB 1, front USB 2, this is a D-Bag LED. Buttons and LEDs are located here. Unfortunately, front USB 3 is connected over here. This is not very convenient, especially if you have a tight case over here. On the motherboard itself, you can see three PCI Express X16 slots, two PCI Express X1 slots, two M.2 ports for SSD drives. One of them is marked as SATA.M2. This means you could potentially install there a SATA M.2 drive but I do not have such drives, so thus I didn't have a chance to test it. There is also one extra M.2 adapter for Wi-Fi. On this side you can see the power connectors, 8 pin for the CPU, 24 pin for the motherboard, 8 SATA 3 ports and USB 3 port, which we have already seen. There is just one 4 pin fan header, as I mentioned before, and three 3 pin fan headers, one over here, one over here and one over here. Unfortunately, the VRM cooling is also active, the same as on Huanangji X99TF, but unlike Huanangji X99TF, these particular fans are working pretty quiet and I have no complaints about that. I have started my testing with the Intel Core i7-6800K. The maximum supported memory speed on this motherboard with i7-6800K is DDR4-2600. Everything above that does not work. This CPU was tested with the following RAM specification. 32GB in 4x8GB sticks DDR4-3200. 64GB for sticks of 16GB each DDR4-3000. 64GB with 4 sticks of 8GB each and 2 sticks of 16GB. 96GB, 4 sticks by 16GB and 4 sticks by 8GB. It's important to mention that this configuration only worked when I installed the same RAM in the same channels. For example, if I install the RAM as 816, 816, 816, 816, the motherboard refuses to start. But if I install the RAM as 88, 88, 16, 16, 16, 16, everything is working fine. Thus, if I have an 8GB stick and 16GB stick installed on the same memory channel, the system does not work. But if I have 8GB sticks installed in two channels and 16GB sticks are installed into the other two channels, then system is working stable and everything is fine. 
Using Huanan GX99F8, I was able to overclock my i7-6800K to 4.1 GHz. Unfortunately, BIOS settings do not work, and I had to use Intel Extreme Tuning Utility. In this case, the best option would be to leave BIOS settings with the default values and just use the Intel XTU to apply the settings. It is a bit weird, but it doesn't matter what kind of settings I was trying to apply. As soon as I try to pass the 4.1 GHz barrier, the system is either freezing or crashing. 4.2 did not work with any settings and with any voltage. 4.1 GHz is very stable, no crashes, no issues or anything like that. Now, the PCI Express slot configurations with i7-6800K are working with the following setup. The first slot is working only as PCI Express X8. Configuration in BIOS does not really change anything, this slot is only working as X8. The second one is working with the full speed of X16, so this is the preferable slot to install the graphics card if you are using an i7 processor. The last slot with the i7-6800K does not work at all. With Xeon E5 1650v3, maximum RAM speed was DDR4-2400. Anything above that does not work. The following RAM configuration was tested with the Xeon E5 1650v3. 32GB in 4x8 sticks DDR4-3200. 64GB 4x16 sticks DDR4-3000. 96GB 4-16GB sticks and 4-8GB sticks. 32GB with 132GB registered ECC memory stick, 128GB of RAM with 232GB sticks, 216GB sticks, 48GB sticks. All of the sticks were ECC registered RAM with 128GB in total. Everything was working stable, no problems, no issues. Huanan GX99F8 was able to overclock E5 1650v3 to 4.5GHz. Unfortunately, to make the system stable, I had to go down to 4.3 GHz, but the good news is that BIOS settings and Intel XTU or Intel Extreme Tuning Utility, they both work, and it's possible to overclock Xeon E5-1650v3 with no issues on this motherboard. The PCI Express X16 slots are working with the following configuration. The first two slots are X16, the last one is X4. Unfortunately, while testing Xeon E5-2650v3, one of the RAM slots on the motherboard has died. That is why I was not able to complete full RAM specification test with Xeon E5-2650v3. Still, I was able to test the following configuration. 160GB of RAM with two sticks of 32GB each DDR4-2666, two sticks of 32GB each DDR4-2400, and two sticks of 16GB each DDR4-2133. All of the sticks were registered ECC server RAM. Everything was working perfectly stable with no issues. 64GB with two sticks of 32GB DDR4-2400 ECC registered RAM. Unfortunately, the motherboard memory slot has died before I have tested the desktop RAM. Still, I have tested DDR4-3200 and DDR4-3000. I was able to successfully unlock Xeon E5-2650v3 Turbo Boost frequencies on Huanan GX99F8 motherboard. Unfortunately, CPU power management does not work, and it's not possible to increase the CPU consumption limits. That's why under heavy Prime 95 load, CPU is downclocking itself to 2.8-2.9 GHz, but in games which are not 100% utilizing the CPU, the CPU frequency is staying at around 3 GHz all the time. PCI Express X16 slots are working exactly the same as with the Xeon E5-1650v3. We have two X16 slots and the last one is working as X4 slot. For the memory testing I had three different 32GB DDR4 server registered RAM sticks and Quantum GX99F8 refused to work with one of the sticks. It's very weird that the stick is identical to another stick, which is working perfectly fine. It has identical memory configuration, identical layout, and even identical model number. The only difference is the manufacturer. Chinese sticks are working, Korean do not work. I have two sticks of each type, two Chinese are working, two Korean do not work.
What's even more strange is that I have two extra 32GB DDR4-2666 Korean SK Hynix sticks and those two work no problem. Just these two DDR4-2400 SK Hynix Korean do not work. Exactly the same sticks but from China are working with no problem. After testing different CPUs and memory sticks on Huanan GX99F8, I went to test all the rest of the functionality. To test USB 3.0 ports, I have performed my usual test, running Crystal Disk Mark using external SSD Samsung T5. No issues were detected here, the system was stable, and the reported speeds were on the level. SATA 3.0 ports are all working well. 4-pin fan header is working no problem. Unfortunately, it's just one, but it's working. It's also possible to regulate the fan speed if it's a 4-pin fan. 3-pin fans are not recognized by the system, it's not possible to monitor them with HW monitor, and it's not possible to regulate their speed. NVMe slots PCI Express 3 and PCI Express 2 are working well. The first slot, which is PCI Express 3 X4, is working with the speed PCI Express 3. The second one, which is also supposed to support SATA SSDs, is working with the PCI Express 2 X4. Unfortunately, I don't have a SATA M.2 SSD to validate if it's gonna work in the second port. Sound quality is quite good, but I'm not a musician, so it's very hard for me to tell. I did not hear any flickers or anything bad, so I would say it's okay. Network port is also working with the default Windows 10 drivers. Windows Sleep mode works, Linux is supported, booting from NVMe drive is also working, Turbo Boost works well, Turbo Boost Unlock is possible, but BIOS modification is required. It's also possible to configure RAM timings, but the number of settings is limited. VRM thermal performance is acceptable. After 8 minutes of Prime95 stress test with a Xeon E5 1650V3 overclocked to 4.3 GHz with 1.33 V, the system was reporting 79 degrees Celsius VRM temperature. But the same sensor reports 16 degrees Celsius ambient temperature when I have 20-21 degrees in my room. Thus there is a negative offset to the reported temperature, and I can assume that the VRM warmed up to something like 85 or even more degrees. After 8 minutes test, the temperature kept rising, that's why I have stopped the stress test. Thus, I can conclude that the best overclocking settings for Xeon E5 1650V3 on Huanan GX99F8 would be something around 4.2 GHz with 1.25 V. Maybe if you have a very good chip, you could achieve 4.3 GHz with 1.3 V or maybe with 1.27 V, something like that. It's important to mention that my chip was able to work stable with 4.4 GHz with 1.33 volts, but the system was overheating even faster. Now let's make a conclusion about Huanan GX99 F8 motherboard. Currently it's been sold for about 9210 euros. For the pros I can say there are many expansion options, it supports 256 GB of RAM, it looks nice, it has integrated IO shield, it is possible to overclock Xeon E5 1650V3 and i7 5820K, it's also possible to overclock i7-6800K, but only using an Intel Extreme Tuning Utility, not the BIOS settings. Still, not everything is that good. CPU and RAM overclocking is very limited. 6800K is only possible to overclock with the Intel Extreme Tuning Utility, not with the BIOS. And Xeon E5-1650V3 or i7-5820K is overheating VRM quite fast when increasing voltages and frequencies. RAM frequency is also limited to 2400 with the Xeon E5-1650 or i7-5820K to 2600 with the i7-6800K and if you are using Xeon E5 with the locket multiplier, the RAM will be limited to the Intel specification. With the Xeon E5-2650V3, it's DDR4-2133. Temperature sensors on the motherboard are not working as well. Only one sensor is working, and that one is displaying temperature with a negative offset. Thus, I really doubt I can trust it. It's not possible to regulate and control 3-pin fans, 
only 4 pin fans are working properly, and there is just one 4 pin connector. VRM cooling consists of two extra small fans, and even though these two fans were working fine in this particular motherboard, I still think it's a downside. And of course one of the memory slots has died, which is a very big downside. I'm not sure what happened there, how it died, but it just died. I will contact the seller and see what he can tell me about this problem. My score for this motherboard would be 7 out of 10 if I do not take into account the dead motherboard memory slot. If I would have to take the dead motherboard memory slot into account, the score would be 4 out of 10. You don't want to have triple memory channel if you are paying for 4 memory channel and 8 memory slots. Link to the shop where I have bought the motherboard will be provided in the video description. I will also provide a few extra AliExpress links where you can buy different components and help me and the channel. For the alternatives, you can always buy 100x99TF, this motherboard has gone down in price as well and now can be found for about 90 to 110 euros. Of course, the biggest difference between this and X99TF is that X99TF has only 4 DDR4 memory slots, the other 4 are DDR3 memory slots. Other than that, these are identical motherboards. If you are looking for something tiny, take a look at 100X99M8. This is a micro ATX form factor motherboard, but it has just two memory slots. Thus, you will get just dual memory channel configuration. Right now, I have in my test laboratory Klisre X99D4. This is also a tiny motherboard, also with just two memory slots. And I'm expecting Klisre X99D8, as well as X99 Dual Socket LJ2011 version 3 motherboards. Once I receive the motherboards, I will test them and provide detailed results on my channel. That's all I have for you for today. Thanks for watching, thanks for listening, I hope you have enjoyed it. Goodbye.